I'm Robin Higgins, and this is reactive versus non-reactive atoms. All right, so to look at this question, let's examine the periodic table. So we can figure out a lot about how an atom is going to react or not by looking at where it's placed on the periodic table. And in general, the way that we organize our periodic table is, first of all, this middle chunk right here are called the transition metals. And these are all the metals that we kind of associate in everyday life with being metal. So you have zinc, mercury, gold, silver, copper. These are all in the transition metals. And the eight columns or groups uh, not in the transition metals are labeled groups one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And these groups determine how many valence electrons each atom has uh, in its last shell. So, uh, if you remember the octet rule, it says that every atom really wants eight valence electrons. So, that means that the noble gases over here in group eight already have all their valence electrons. They don't want to get any more, they don't want to lose any more. So that means the noble gases are pretty inert. They're happy already, they're done reacting. If, however, we look at fluorine or chlorine, the halogens, uh, these have seven valence electrons. And seven is really close to eight, so chlorine is really super close to being happy. So he's gonna do anything he can to get that one extra hydrogen or uh, electron to become eight. And so, what he's going to consider doing is bonding with something over here that only has one. So that's why if you have hydrochloric acid, it's because chlorine, who has seven, really wants to bond with something that has one. So chlorine will be reactive if it can get to those eight valence electrons. So let's look at something that's not in these traditional eight groups. Down here, we have uranium. And uranium is very reactive, but in a different way. So uranium is actually radioactive, which means if you have a bunch of uranium, a nucleus, and you shoot it with an extra neutron, it will actually explode into two different uh, nuclei. And this is how the atomic bomb works. So obviously very reactive, but not really anything to do with achieving the correct number of electrons. Um, in general, Metals can also react, and usually these metals will want to lose electrons. However, they don't really function in the same clear-cut octet rule way as these guys. So, here we have it, our three main groups, radioactive things, metals, and our traditional eight groups. And this is kind of some of the uh, reactivity of the different elements. I'm Robin Higgins, and this is reactive versus non-reactive atoms. Thank you.